time to spend another 30 minutes as Skippy Lowe looks at Hollywood. Tis said music hath charm, and two of our guests today can vouch for that fact. They are the noted singer Joni Summers and the modern day night, musical night that is, Horace Height Jr. Tis also said home is where the heart is. Another of our guests this day is Daniel Bushnell, who is opening his heart to the homeless in Los Angeles. And now. Now, to shed more light on our guests, is your incandescent man of the half hour, Skip E. Lowe. Johnny Summers. Come alive! <laughs> oh, those great Pepsi-Cola things are. You're noted for those great commercials. Come yeah. alive. Tell me about coming alive. What do you mean by that? <laughs> keep young, Not think young. Does. Yes, yes. Hey, does that keep you alive and yeah. young? And I don't know. It's been a long time. The last one I did for them was... Uh, a few years ago was mm -hmm. the, the Now You See It, Now You Don't campaign. Right. And that was 20 years later, which was kind of nice, yes. actually, just prior to the um, Michael Jackson's campaign. And although it wasn't, uh, wasn't videos that were mine, it was just the voiceover that was mine. It was really nice. Joni Summers. Kept God. me alive to some it degree, did, you know? Darling. You know, yeah. I'm looking at you right now. Natalie Wood, what a wonderful picture. You did the voice for Daisy Clover. Ooh. No, we're supposed to do. Supposed to do. It? Supposed to do it. Andre what Previn. Do you mean? What well, happened? Andre Previn Tell wanted me, me to do. He wanted me to do the voice for Inside Daisy Clover. And what happened actually was that he took me to Warner Brothers. Right. And he played piano. I'll never forget it as long as I live because he played piano and we did. Uh, You're gonna hear from me and you know it was right. this big thing. Great song. He pushed for it and. The reason I didn't get it was because they knew that my voice was so, so identifiable, supposedly, that uh -huh. people would immediately... Now, who did it? No. Who did I don't remember. Somebody like... Uh, maybe Marnie Nixon? I don't know, She's but I really thought a lot you of did voices. it. I really no, no. That no. voice. Yes, you are identifiable. Yes. So definitely. they would know that it was not Natalie's no, voice uh -huh. if, did you ever if meet it was her? mine. Did you meet her? No, I never did. She was a great lady. I Lovely bet she lady. Was. Yes, she was. Tell me about Joni Summers looking back over your life. I mean... What do you want me to tell well, you? Well, are you from California it. originally or uh, where? Come no. on, Joni. We're 18. I'm, from, I'm 18. from Buffalo, New York. I was Buffalo. born and raised there uh -huh. from a very Polish Catholic family. Okay. A uh, very strict family. I was the oldest of three uh -huh. children. Uh -huh. um, we moved out here in 1954. In a 1941 car, we, we left home because my family was the first to divorce. I mean, we were very Catholic, and my family was the first uh -huh. to divorce. So we left home, started a new life in California, uh -huh. and um, I started going to Venice High School here. Mm -hmm. Became singer with a high school dance band, uh -huh. and uh, from there went to, uh, to do things like bar mitzvahs and weddings uh -huh. and things like that. At 18? Um, and at 18, by 18, I was already signed... That's to Warner Brothers. Wonderful. Which is amazing. Oh, God, look at this. <laughs> I didn't know what happened. For those who think young. Here we go with young again. <laughs> <don't you? laughs> well, that was based on the, um, you know, that was a, a little quip from the, um, from the commercial the again. Really, this is a great picture. <laughs> well, <laughs> are you cute? <laughs> What's some of the favorite songs, Joni? Come on, what are some of your favorite songs? What are some of my favorite songs? I have so many. What's new with the favorite on the first? Uh, Wait, does he, do you have the first one? Oh, what is the first one? Where is the it? The first one is, let me see. see. Do you have it? It was I, this one. No, so, it isn't no, there. No, it's not here? No. Nope. Okay, anyway. It was what long music? hair, no makeup, and it was called Don't Positively have. the Most, which was supposed to rhyme with Drost, which is my real name. Uh-huh. And Warner Brothers decided at that time that wasn't a name, that uh, that was an identifiable name or something that would ring in your ears. Is this your real name? Summers? No, no they changed, my real they name changed Drost. it. Drost. They, they changed, changed it, it, I changed it. <laughs> they gave me a list of names to choose from. But Joni James, didn't you worry about that name? Joni no. Summers, Joni Same? I was a little bit after Joni yeah, James. Yeah, right. Well, Just a little. <laughs> Give me a break. I'm old enough. I don't have to be any older than I am. She was, she was already what? a big star by she that time. She was then, yeah, of course. You know? But what was the song <laughs> that made you star of Joni? All right. Um, I had an album out first. Right. And that was primarily good standard type things. Mm -hmm. And they labeled me a jazz singer at uh -huh. that time. Uh -huh. Although I don't think of but myself as one or the other. No, no. Almost immediately they decided then that they wanted me to go with the teen market. So immediately they started throwing tunes at me and we went out to record and uh -huh. I had a hit record with a thing called Johnny Get Angry. That's it. That's so it. that was my hit record. That's it. And I had a tune called One Boy from Bye Bye Birdie that uh -huh. did very well. Right, exactly. And a few other funny, silly uh -huh. little songs. And 
along with those, I continued to do good albums, things with Lorindo Almeida and, and other people, and, and did had you a great time. entertain the troops overseas? No. Nope. But I you used, worked with Bob Hope, though. Yeah, I did a lot of I did a lot of the variety shows that were on the air. I uh -huh. came just at the tail end and of, this, of yeah. all that good stuff uh -huh. that was going on. Because the boys would have loved you. I would have loved them. <laughs> they would have loved you. Thank Tell you. me about working with Bob Hope. How was it? Working? It was wonderful. I was mean, it? he was a legend, and I was this little girl from nowhere, and I worked with Bob Hope. In fact, my very first mm -hmm. variety show um, that, that was really important to me was one in which it was called Bobby Darren and Friends. It was Bobby Darren, Bob Hope, and myself. Himself, I was right. the only girl. And I got to dance, and I got to sing, and I got to have clothes made by uh -huh. Rick Turner, and, uh -huh. and I had a wonderful time. But I almost immediately stopped working. I worked for only a three to four year period, and but everybody thinks wait. I continued to yeah, work. Yeah, but you didn't. You stopped. Well, I stopped. Why? For a lot of reasons. A, a lot you of reasons. You had a man I, in your life? I had a, a gentleman in my life. I, d I decided to get married, and I was afraid of leaving my babies with a maid. You know, I, babies, for me. Babies, that means two, three. I have three now. Three. I have three, uh -huh. yeah. And um, it was difficult because I loved to sing. I always had. And, uh -huh. and I don't know, I, I didn't feel secure enough thinking that I could have my children and have a career, too. So I stopped. Mm -hmm. And then all during the time I stopped, I watched everybody else get up there. And I was at, a, I was at the peak of my career. I was you offered, certainly were. I was offered a, a contract by Ray Stark just before Barbara Streisand did and all you, those and things. And you just and walked I said, away from it. I said, no, I was frightened. I was really frightened. I had just had my first baby, mm. and I was afraid. Afraid of success. Afraid of not so much of success as of not being able to take care of my family. Children. And that was first important to me. But, that was the most important thing to me. But you've had some difficult years, Johnny. Well, I mean, look, we look, all do. <laughs> I know, but you, <laughs> you married sweet. a man that you really loved. And yeah. Immediately after he died, he left yeah. you. Well, it was it almost was 10 tough. years later, so yeah, it was, it was, it was I had tough. some time. You've had it, yeah. but you came back now. Yes. What, what made you come back? Well, what well, my children Johnny were James. pretty much... John Summers. That's back. okay. Yeah. Um, my, my children were pretty much grown. I had gone through a lot of things during that 10, 12-year period of time, and I was coming to a point in my life where I had to decide whether I would give it another try or stop altogether because in all of the years about 15 years of not working i did things here and i did things yes. there but as you are and you were all very much right. aware of you don't stop 10 minutes in this business let yes. alone 10 or 12 years and i had stopped when i got married i had started back again and two weeks later my husband died mm -hmm. so i went back into seclusion more or less yes. and was frightened to death raised my kids went away from everybody and um here and there, as I said, tried to work, and it was very difficult because there was no one there. Uh -huh. You know, that happens. Yes, I mean, yes. I closed the doors, so well, it was up to me. I'm happy that you're back. I am, too. Really, really. Thank you. I understand you're doing really well now. Will you be working at the Vine Street? I'll uh, be working at the Vine Street June, in, Ju in June. 16th and 17th, Good. Tuesday and but Wednesday night. you're really night. busy. I am. I'm busier in the last two and a half Real years quick, than I've been in 15. Do you have any regrets 15. in your life, Joni? Right oh, now? God. That you gave up, and that, you know? I could say would-haves, could-haves, should-haves, but the fact is I had to go through that to get to here, so. Yeah. And I'm happier than I've been in, in years and years uh -huh. and years. Do you know there's a gentleman next to you is Horace Height, Jr. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful Horace Height, Jr. Your father has brought a lot of great talent to America and the world. Am I right, Joni? Oh, yes. yes. Are you kidding? Tell Are me you? about... <laughs> Growing up with your dad. Well, it was very Honey. exciting. I uh, started in show business at the age of three on his television show. Right. And I think the first song I sang was We Three Are Musketeers. Really a big tune <laughs> at the time. Uh -huh. <laughs> then that went to me and my shadow, and we ain't got a barrel of money. But that's uh -huh. a long story and a long time ago. But uh, it was very exciting growing up because my father dedicated his life and got his, most of his happiness from helping, helping people in the business. Right. And he uh, surrounded himself with those people all the time and, in fact, bought a ranch in the San Fernando Valley uh -huh. where they could all live. And when I was growing up, I uh -huh. mean, Ken Berry was tap dancing around the ranch. Uh, the, the band was rehearsing uh -huh. every day. Uh -huh. We had a 
completely different hall for the dancers, and they were uh -huh. dancing. Is this the complex still? Now it's this an apartment house, apartment house, and most of the people that live there are in entertainment. Are stars? On your stars. Show. Barbara Hale. Barbara Hale, I mean, Roberta Sherwood, Sherwood, Jack Jimmy Leonard, Caesar. Jimmy I mean, Caesar. Oh my gosh. Little Jimmy Caesar, great little. Dick Andrew. Van Patten lived there for eleven years. He uh -huh. no longer lives here. Uh -huh. uh, and who else? We uh, Helen Forrest just Helen moved Forrest. in. Helen Forrest, wonderful. Tell me, growing up, you say it's it was been wonderful. I mean, it hasn't uh, any pain back there. Well. It's I mean, give and take. It's like Joni said, you know, there's the good with the bad, but I think it's up to the individual to choose which side they're going to look at. Uh -huh. You can spend your whole life dwelling on the bad days. Mm -hmm. I mean, every, every year it's got to rain a couple of days, and you can sit and dwell on those days yes, your yes. whole life, uh -huh. or you can enjoy the sunny days uh -huh. and only remember the sunny days. You have a brother. And that's what I choose to do. You I have two brothers. Two brothers. So yeah. there are three of you. That, well, there's four of us, because I have a sister, too. Oh, okay. So there's, there's four okay. children. I'm the baby. Uh-huh. And, uh, and you have a marvelous band. We have a wonderful band. We've been the Raider band uh, for the Los Angeles Raiders ever since they came to L.A., uh -huh. and, and this will be my sixth year with them. Six. And we met a lot of wonderful people, uh, you know, uh, that sing the national anthem, uh -huh. and we have some, a following from the fans, and uh, that's been a lot of fun. And then I, we also work at Disneyland. Disneyland. And, um, in fact, last year we were the house big band there. Uh -huh. This year they've gone back to a multiple band policy, which I'm actually happier about because... Uh, Horace Height Jr., tell me real quick. Yeah. What does Horace Height Jr., not just a band leader, but more than just a band leader, you know, your dad has helped a lot of great talent, like you say. Would you like to do something like that? Absolutely. I mean, why didn't you take Star Pursuit or Star... I mean, why? You, you would have been to perfect. answer that? Yeah, I would like to say. Because Star, You would have been perfect. I really shouldn't say this, but I'm, Go ahead. I'm going to, okay? I think Star you Search took our pilot. That's right. That's right. I we, believe it. We, we did a pilot. We I did. believe it. Well, I'm not going to use that word. Well, but he came we, to me we at the Hyatt it. and got his. Yes, Bob did. Yeah. And I didn't like I think you're the one who should have done it. Well, I would have liked to, and I still do, and I, I help talent all the time. The talent I'm helping right now happens to be in my band, right. and they're not beginners, but there are, some of them are names that no one's heard of, uh -huh. and I, I just did an album, and, and I had to decide, am I going to go and get the top guys in town that yes. everybody knows, or use my people that I have been working with that have been loyal to me yes. and are great, and I decided the latter. Because you have a better eye. Who would have, or have a better eye looking at young talent than you as you were growing up? Than those people. Well, I mean, I, let's face I grew it. Up who's, in it yeah. I mean, these people are young little kitties working on that show, and they're picking these talent. They don't have an eye. They're just children, you know. Well, that's what's, that's what's are happening to our business. Are you satisfied with what's happening to our business? No, I'm. I mean, I'm, we have youngies operating it, don't you think? I I just think that there's not the substance anymore, and the thought, and the and the written word anymore. The lyrics to the songs, the situations in the comedies are uh -huh. just not sophisticated. They're just pablum, uh -huh. and I'm very sad about it. I miss the musicals. Uh -huh. You know, last last week I saw the, the Music Man. I mean, it was one of the great shows great. of all time to me. Yeah. Yes. In fact, maybe that's how I look at myself a little as a music man. Yes. Yes. Maybe there's a little bit of the uh -huh. think method in me, yes. if you want me to be really yeah, honest. Of course. But I love talent, and I do have a good eye you for it. You certainly do. And I enjoy working with them and, and, and helping them. Joni, look. I look at you, Joni Summers. <laughs> Are there good singers out there for you today? Are you satisfied with what's happening with the singers? Oh, oh my God. goodness, Come on, that's a tough question. Is it? There are very few people that I would go out and see, except that I had been away for such a long time. At yeah. this point, I go out to see as many people as I can. Do you consider yourself a cabaret but performer or a recording star? Or what would you I'm do? a little bit of each, each, which is sometimes tough to handle, yeah. uh -huh. you know, because it's hard to label. Uh -huh. Me, I, you know, I'd, again, I had hit records on in, on the teen end. Those were tunes that uh -huh. I didn't want to do. Yes. You know, uh -huh. which goes to show, what do I know about hit records? Uh, I love doing the old standards. I love doing the big band things. Uh -huh. I love doing special material if I can get good special material uh -huh. written. I, I love the Broadway shows. I mean, I think yes. there's a little bit of good in, in a lot of things. I uh -huh. do believe that some tunes being written, though, today are good. I think yes. they're in, in, there's uh -huh. sporadic things yes, happening. Yes. So I think there is a place again. I think, I think it's coming around. Uh -huh. I'm with you in that uh, for a long time there was 
terrible stuff going on. Uh -huh. um, but in between, there's always someone that comes up with something wonderful. How do you keep the music playing? Is right. it, I mean, yes, please. Yes, yes, yes. And that's uh, a Saving beautiful All My song. Love and the uh, Whitney Houston yeah. too. Yes, but I mean, she's a lot of those aren't new songs, though. So she took some old standards. She's got a new well, one that's now. That's coming right up, too. very big hit right now. Yeah. You sing. Yes. But that's not my main thing. What I is mean, your main thing? Sitting next to this lady who's yeah. been uh, my favorite singer all my life. Oh my. And she is. Great singer. Yeah. She's oh, a, a great singer. Watch me blush. I watch consider her a woman star, a, a, a stylist, uh -huh. Uh -huh. everything, every word. Ella Fitzgerald good. summed it up very nicely. She says, Joni Summers <laughs> is, is, is no one like her. Well, there, that's you can really special. That's what she said. That's, that's what Alice said. Once, yeah. I think that's why I'm, I'm uh, keeping it going because at this point in my life, I, I realized something very important. I realized that being away for that long uh -huh. really bothered me. There was a part of me that was never alive yes. because, yeah. because I give who I am uh -huh. when I'm singing. You know, I give out, I communicate uh -huh. when I sing. Do you like the theater or the cabaret best? Yes. I like them both. I like them both. I really, really do, do like them both, yes. Yes. I thought sometimes maybe you would like feel more comfortable on a stage than uh, I like club. them both. Cabarets, you like that I touching? Really, oh yeah, I like to be close. You to know, people. I have a gentleman right now is helping a lot of wonderful. It's a great organization. It's and it's uh, matter of fact, it's a review. It's opening, I think, tomorrow night, and it's called Coming Home, and it's going to be at the uh, Bosworth Theater. Is that correct? Yes, the Bosworth Theater in West Delhi. Bosworth. Yes. Hi. How are Hi, you? Daniel? Fine. Yes. Bushnell. Bushnell. Bushnell? How are you? This is Joni. And Hi, Hi, Daniel. Tell me about this wonderful thing you're doing that's going to help the poor of the... Well, actually, it's a concert in support of the homeless. And we have uh, just wonderful talent collected. We have the gospel singer, Linda Hopkins. Oh, she's we have great. Terry Lester from The Young and the Restless, who's going to be doing some dramatic readings. We have the 30-voice Seraphim Chorale, which I direct. Uh -huh. uh, the Los Angeles Chamber Ballet. And uh, we have audiovisuals presented by Awakening Heart Productions. Good God, that's a yeah. big review. That is great. Where We're are you from excited. originally? Actually, I'm from New Hampshire. Uh huh. How did you get yourself involved? You're an actor. You're you are. I came out to Los Angeles a couple of years ago from Baltimore um, with the thought of being an actor, and I found choral music, which was had been a love of mine. Actually, I started very much like Horace. My uh -huh. father put a trumpet in my mouth when I was four. <laughs> and, uh, he had a little Dixieland band, uh -huh. and I was playing in it about seven. And I played trumpet for 23 years. And then one oh. day, I went and heard a choir sing, and they were just the most inspiring group of people. And I just fell in love with the power of choral music to affect people. Uh -huh. And so I began conducting choirs myself. And I just, uh, after coming out here, I just found that I couldn't be without it. Oh, that's great. Linda Hopkins, she's a, oh, I love that. Oh, she's so great. Do she's, I. Oh, she is, do I. she is <laughs> fabulous. Tell me about Linda Hopkins. What is she going to do tomorrow night? Well, is she's... going to do uh, she, her we, gospel or what else? She is hard to predict. <laughs> you never know what that woman's going to do. I love we her. went to uh, see the Wadsworth Theater. They had a, a gospel choir there, uh -huh. and Linda Hopkins happened to be in the audience. And she was very tired, and it was a, a long service, and they invited her up to sing after which, which I don't think she expected. Uh -huh. And uh, she, she looked very tired, and she just kind of crawled up on stage, and they put a mic in her hand, and you could barely hear the woman sing. Mm -hmm. She took the mic away, and she filled the theater with her own voice. They mm -hmm. had a, a problem with the sound system, so she chucked the mic and began to sing down by the riverside, and mm -hmm. just took over uh, the stage, danced, yes, jumped, leaped. Yes. People were on their feet uh -huh. in, in 15 seconds. They so it's going to be go. here Friday, Saturday, and Sunday? Uh, Saturday night and Sunday night. Saturday and Sunday. Mm -hmm. Ah. I see. And it's two shows? Uh... Two shows, 8 o'clock at the Wadsworth Theater. Why two shows, may I ask? I mean, well, is it sold out or is it a uh, demand? Is it a big demand? It's, or? it's looking good. We've, we've publicized the event widely, and each of the talent in the show has their own audience who's coming to see them. Oh, I see. And That's my nice. joy has been in collecting all of these different talents and just watching them do what they do best yes. and sharing that for a cause. Most of the talent has been very excited about the idea of coming and using their gift to do something for someone else. Who came up with the title? I like the title very much. Coming Home? Coming Home. Uh, actually, it just came to me on the beach one day. So it you just came seemed up to uh -huh. pop into my head and felt right. So I went. We don't have enough people helping the homeless. Don't you think so, Joni? What do you think about that? I Horse think you're right. Huh? I mean, this country yeah. needs... Sad. It is sad. It's so sad anymore. Our America 
I mean, the poor out there. It's just, it's I had It's not supposed Marsha to Hunch. be that way. We're human beings. We're yes. supposed to be here to help one another. There should be no one without That's a home right. and no one without food in their mouth. Yes, yes. Some, some place to be and, you know, to keep warm and to have food and to be clean and, to, you know. You must get a lot of awful. stars. Of course, you must get a lot of stars like Joni Summers and people like Linda Hopkins and that would like to We've, Give their um, service because we've of this. been very fortunate, and uh, our advisory board has a uh -huh. lot of uh, well-known celebrities on it who have been willing to, to help the cause out because uh -huh. they feel very much like you do, Joni. Yeah. We have almost 3 million homeless in this country, mm. and 100,000 of them are in California. 50,000 of them are in Los Angeles, so we are the homeless capital of the United States. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that's, that's kind of a dubious honor, but yes. yeah. um, it's beginning to affect a lot of people directly. Yes. And so people are beginning to do things about it and asking themselves, well, what can we do? And that's one of the reasons we created this concert, because not only is it just a really fun, entertaining evening, uh -huh. but it's also an education about the homeless situation. We have three homeless agencies that we're donating our proceeds to, and they that's will be there to, to kind of to get fill people in about wonderful. what they can do. That's wonderful. UCLA, what's involved? They're involved? Yes. Well, UCLA runs the Wadsworth, and they have the UCLA per Center for the Performing Arts, who is cooperating in this venture. Yes. And they're just a very helpful group of people. They have a show on TV, the UCLA thing. I think they do on cable. I'm not sure. I, th I think they're on Sunday nights. Mm. Could it's be. I'm it's not a good sure. show. Yeah. It's a very, yeah. very good show. I'm Joni, tell me. What? <laughs> You're going to what? sing in here in Vine Street, and yeah. then where? Then I go, let's see, then I may be going back to Atlantic City. I just came back from Atlantic City. Uh -huh. I worked the Golden Nugget, uh -huh. and that's been fun for me. And I worked a place in Connecticut. Um, Where in Connecticut? I love it. A place Connecticut. called the Summit Hotel uh -huh. just recently on a weekend, which was fun. And I'm going to do um, a one-nighter. The first time I'm going to do this in all this time is uh -huh. going to go do an Oldies But Goodies concert up in Reno, and I'm not sure the exact place, uh -huh. in August. And on from there, and I'm just... So you're busy. You're keeping your, oh, keep yourself busy. I'm Isn't that right, Horace? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. You're busy, too. Tell me about well, yourself. I mean, yeah, you know, you're the Raiders. Sure. But you go on the road a lot? I go on the road for Columbia Artists. I uh -huh. do what are called community concerts, mm -hmm. and it's really rewarding because uh, every little town out there in the Midwest uh -huh. has a community concert organization that puts uh -huh. on shows every season, right. but they don't all have concert halls. So one day you'll be in one, the Ambassador Auditorium here in L.A., yes. and the next day you will be in a garage mm -hmm. with no lights or anything, but uh -huh. that is the place for that community. Yes. But the most recent thing I'm doing, coming right up, I'm uh -huh. working at Disneyland for Memorial Day, uh -huh. Saturday and Sunday, coming up right this weekend oh. from 7 to 11 uh -huh. each night with my band. I'm going to feature all the people in my band. How many in the band? There's 16, and uh, I like featuring everyone. Oh, I love big bands. My Don't theory you is you I do, adore uh, big bands. Go ahead, I'm sorry. You do recognizable uh -huh. tunes, you uh -huh. feature somebody, and have a gimmick in every song. Uh -huh. That's my theory. Great. I think so I, uh, I, I, I feature everyone in the band, every, every song someone Do you featured. think big bands are going to come back again? Everybody says yes, yes. Tell me, Horace. I what think so. I what think do you think, Joni? Oh, I hope okay. so. I'm yeah. waiting. I think so. You know what's really happening I now? Love it. There's a lot of summer concerts growing up all over uh -huh. California where because of the cooperation of the Musicians Union and the, yes. uh, the, uh, the recording artist people, it's free to the public. But, you know, the artists are paid. And there are crowds of 10,000, 15,000 uh -huh. are taking over parks and, and going to these concerts. And it's springing up all over the place. That's I'm doing exciting. about yeah, that five is, that this is summer. Exciting. That's yeah. exciting. One is the Warner Center uh -huh. Park. Uh, in, in Woodland Hills. Another one's Pollywog Park in Redondo That's Beach. Great. That's great. There's a big one in San Diego, oh, and I can't remember. Uh, there's another one in Palos Verdes called the Lemonade so Concert. So Forest Height Jr. Yes. is busy. Oh, we're, right. we're And you got busy. your complex, you and your brothers, all four of you, well, five of you? Well, actually, I, I'm kind of, You're the, my dad recently passed away. He did. Yeah, yes. in December, yes. and so I'm kind You're of the, doing that taking now. Taking care of that. Yeah, carrying on the tradition there. Robert Hale, Bill Williams. They've been there how long? Uh, oh, I love those Many people. years. Roberta Sherwood's been there maybe over 20 years. Did she? She got her uh, raincoat here last time she was oh, on. Oh, I'll get it. She came back and got it. Oh, uh, okay. I like she Great. is a funny lady. I mean, she started so late in the business. This lady started real late. Yeah. You know? Yes. Yes, What's she late? Late 40s. 
I mean, she got into the business ah, in the 40s. Right. I didn't she know wasn't that. young. Yeah. She got into the business, you know. Wonderful. Like lady. you, mm -hmm. she's a child. One know. of the great entertainers. Uh -huh. How about acting? How about Joining? acting? Yeah, come on, let's I've get it. I've done some. You've I've done, done some? Yeah, I like. haven't done any recently, but I did. I did a lot of the shows that were at, like, Burke's Law and yeah. just bits and pieces. Yes, yeah. Would you, like to, you like to do oh, acting? Yeah. Oh, yeah. How yes. about you, Horace Height Jr.? I, I've, You've done um, some, haven't I've you? done some acting, I've done musicals, and I work with Francis Lederer. I had him on the show. You did. And he fell off the stage, and I'm so worried <laughs> about oh, him. He lives in Palm Springs now. I, I, well, I talked to his agent or his PR man, and I hope so. I don't yeah. know, but I love Francis Lederer. One of the great the dearest people. Man. One of the you know most who we're talking about, Francis mm -hmm. Lederer? You do? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Okay. He's an old movie star. Brilliant right? man. Uh, his I love theory, him. I shouldn't go into this, but is when you act, you have to always be doing something else. And if you're doing something else, you're not thinking about your acting, and then you come over very naturally. That's, right. That's it. But he's a genius, and he instills this in all of his Did people. you ever study with him? Oh, yes. You did? Several years, yes. Really? He's a dear friend, and his wife, Marion. I just adore him. She, yeah. Yeah. Tell me about yourself. Are you going to get into uh, your... Now, after this well, is over with, or are you just... Tell me. I am quite busy between now and Sunday night. On Monday morning, <laughs> I will probably be uh, heavily involved in planning for the next show. Uh -huh. I am writing a screenplay, which I hope to finish uh, September of this year. Uh -huh. And I plan to get married this year. Oh, and, nice. uh, Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. And uh, I will probably do a little bit of acting. I do love acting as well. Uh -huh. Good type. It's a good type. Clean cut type. Good type. Thank you. But I think to make it, it seems like young men like yourself have to do a screenplay and uh, star in it. That's, I you know. know. Everybody has their own story. You know, I think you have to find what works for you. Because you ask 20 people and you have 20 different success stories. Uh -huh. And... Uh, if you just kind of follow what's in your heart, and that seems to be the path that works right. for people. Well, Americans are going for cutie pies, and I'm really tired of it, like <laughs> Michael J. Foxes. And, uh, oh, I mean, I love this. Oh, come on, Tony. No, he's not I adorable. think he is adorable, oh, and it. I think he's good, and I watched the show. Forget it. I don't care. I forget. watched okay, the show. Joey, I don't care. He's okay. He's okay. <laughs> There's no characters like Balmondos. Oh, it's, it's, it's a different depth. thing altogether. There is. There isn't. Wait. Come on, Joey. They're youngies. We don't young. Let's get some actors out there. But what do you I think about that, Horace? Come on. Well, I agree with both of you to be the diplomat here. I, I, I think I mean, Michael J. is great, but we do. We miss the great character yeah, actors that the made the, 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 the classic movies. There. It Thank was you. the supporting Walter roles. I didn't Absolutely. Say, I didn't believe that. But I Michael is he's cute. Uh, he's Michael. okay, but there's too many. Americans are throwing that at their people out there, and it's time tired of it. Yeah, you know, we need cutie the pies. Veteran actors, we need people uh, like Mickey Rooney. Nice, uh, chubby. He's a great uh, talent. A I did a movie with Mickey brilliant. Rooney once. Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> that's a whole yeah, no American. I love it. Which one did you do? Oh, I did a thing we don't talk about very oh, often because right. my voice wasn't used. It was the very first year that I was working. Uh -huh. I was with Mickey Rooney and Buddy Hackett. It was called, love them both. are you ready? Everything's Ducky. Again, I <laughs> Everything Ducky. Yeah, the star well, of the film was the duck. Uh -huh. No, the star of the film was the duck. <laughs> <laughs> it was about a talking duck. I'm serious. Yeah. Something I don't admit no, to I'm not very putting often. Michael J. Fox down. He's fine. But I'm tired of the Americans throwing cutie pies at us on TV. And I I'm think we tired. should. Be, I'm tired.